This is my second least favorite medication in the entire world. It's derived from nature, it comes from the poppy plant, and in my opinion, is garbanzo beans. Funnily enough, this chemical actually isn't even active by itself. You have to take it, and then your body transforms it into morphine. And the chemical I'm talking about is codeine. This is an opioid pain reliever and supposed cough suppressant, although it's not really good for either. It's, it's okay for pain, but we'll talk about why the benefits likely don't outweigh the risks in most cases. I have taken codeine personally, and it did absolutely nothing, and it was a complete waste of time. And I took it for a cough. I was up all night coughing. Like, I'm not even kidding. It was life-limiting. I couldn't go to work. And it did nothing at all. It wasn't until I actually took a first-generation antihistamine, I took Benadryl, that's whenever I finally got some relief. So this is why I hate codeine, and quite frankly, I wish they would take it off the market. Number one, as a pain reliever, it's not that great. And for some people, they actually get really over-sedated with codeine. They can have really profound effects like hallucinations, slurred speech. And I'm not really sure why. It sometimes affects people in that way, and other people it does nothing at all. Like, for me, it did nothing. I never really understood why that happens. It's really, really weird. It's like just kind of a roll of the dice, really. Codeine is an opioid pain reliever, which then obviously o interacts with the opioid receptor. But because it's so variable in people, it's not really worth the risk. We have much better medications to treat pain and much safer medications as well. Codeine tablets like pure, uncut, unadulterated codeine is Schedule II in the United States which means it has a high abuse potential. But there's also a Tylenol with codeine liquid and tablet, which is, I believe, Schedule 3, if I'm not mistaken. And then there's a codeine cough suppressant mixed with guafenicine. And also there's a version mixed with promethazine, which is Schedule 5. The higher the number, the less abuse potential it has. That's the only medication I know of that, like, hits three different schedule classes based on the formulation. Because of this, pure codeine tablets are virtually never prescribed. I think I've seen it like once in my career. I do see the Tylenol and codeine thing pretty often. And of course the codeine cough suppressants. A lot of times I think because it kind of travels through all the schedules, people, especially physicians, think that Tylenol 3, which is the codeine acetaminophen tablets, is like the safer option because it's only schedule 3. And they'll do things like prescribe it for kids, which is not a good idea at all. Because I mentioned earlier, sometimes it's very variable in people. It's an even bigger issue in kiddos. If you get a kid and they super react to codeine, that could be very, very bad. I'm talking like respiratory depression and everything. And that was a fight that I could never win despite that being very, very prominent medical knowledge. In fact, the FDA put out a warning about that. Imagine having a mother with a kid that's in pain show up with a codeine prescription and you have to tell them, this is very dangerous and the FDA does not recommend this. Lots of medical professionals, myself included, don't even recommend using codeine for pain. I am literally a pain specialist, and I've never once in my entire life ever said, I think codeine's a good choice. For cough, it's more of the same. It's not recommended by the American Academy of Family Physicians. It probably does have some benefit. I don't know why I didn't see any benefit when I took it, but it's not really that great and you're messing with something that can be habit forming so because of this even though it does have some effect the benefits likely do not outweigh the risks so make no mistake this is a dangerous chemical but the worst thing of all actually doesn't have anything to do with the danger of it the worst part about codeine is a lot of people have what they think is an allergic reaction to it things like nausea that is not by definition an allergic reaction but They'll tell the doctor they had a rea reaction to it, and once that goes into your medication profile, it can never come off. I know you think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. It will be there for the rest of your life that you are allergic to codeine. This is incredibly significant because codeine is very similar to things like morphine, oxycodone, etc., hydromorphone. And if somebody were to experience extreme pain, think of like a, a, a freak accident or something like that, or surgery, practitioners will be very, very reluctant to prescribe oxycodone, morphine, or anything of the like, because they will see in your allergy list that you are allergic to codeine, even though it's not a real allergy. This is a headache that should have never been in the first place. Now, if you are actually allergic to codeine, if you do have anaphylaxis, if you do have a, uh, perhaps sometimes a skin rash can be um, a true allergic reaction, then yes, of course it should be in your medication profile or your allergy list rather. But for the most part, people just take it, they have an upset tummy and then it goes on their list as an allergy. 
Wow, this is shocking to me. I was just looking at something on my prompter over here, and evidently people are abusing the codeine cough syrup, and they're calling it things like purple drink, and they are taking this cough syrup to feel euphoric effects. This is not good. This is not good at all. If you have ever considered taking codeine for a recreational purpose, I would tell you to not do that. And this is a very serious warning. So yes, it can be habit forming and apparently people are forming habits from it. And not only that, as mentioned earlier, it can cause respiratory depression, which is very, very serious. This is not a toy. This is not a game. This is a very serious chemical. Now, to answer a question from earlier, uh, the reason why some people experience like crazy euphoric effects from it and other folks like myself don't is because codeine is metabolized into morphine. And some people have a genetic mutation where they will more efficiently metabolize codeine into more morphine than others. Apparently, I'm on the end of the spectrum where uh, I don't hardly metabolize anything at all because I don't think it did anything whenever I took codeine. This is called a ultra metabolizer. Now, I believe you can get genetic testing done for this, but it, it it's not worth it. Like, it's just, just avoid the chemical altogether. You don't need to, like, get crazy scientific about something that's not really going to help to begin with. And this can be especially important in breastfeeding mothers because codeine is excreted in breast milk. And if you get a little Baberton a little chocolate, little chub nugget there, and they are a super ultra metabolizer of codeine, and if they get just a little bit from the breast milk, that baby is going to turn it into tons and tons of morphine. Morphine is active. I don't know if I said that earlier. Morphine does indeed interact with the opioid receptor. So that can be a horrible, horrible situation. Could you even imagine? I couldn't. I would be beside myself for all eternity. So yes, I actually do know why it affects some people differently than others. So the codeine, you get a lot of risk, not so much benefit. That's why I hate it. Additionally, the allergy lists of Americans are plagued with codeine allergies that aren't real, and it causes a headache and a withdrawal of care at times. Take, Take it, it off, off the, the market. market. I, I said, said so. so.